Um, hi guys, thanks for coming back to another video. I appreciate y'all coming back. God bless you all. I pray that you all are doing all right with uh, with everything that seems to be going on in the world at this time, focusing on uh, COVID-19, which seems to be waging war globally at this time. Um, I pray that you are standing upon Psalm 91 and knowing that the pestilences that come at noonday um, are, come not nigh thee. Uh, speak that over your life. Speak it over your family. And um, continue to wash your hands and use the non-pharmaceutical interventions that most of you all's health departments and agencies are guiding and directing you to do social distancing and everything else. I pray that you all are well and that you are surviving being in the household with all of your family, which can be difficult enough as it is. Um, so guys, I just want to say God bless you. I'm so glad that you're back. Um, there are a couple of things that I want to talk to you about today that seem to be very important. Um, and they, I am being directed by the Lord to go ahead and put out this video. And I really don't know how to go about putting this video out because everything that the Lord wants me to discuss and show you has happened over a span of time. Um, and it's, it's going to be, I'm just, I've prayed and said, Lord, give me the words and the direction and the guidance that you want this video to unfold so that, um, so that folks will know what it is that you wanted to ensure that they heard in this video. So guys, I just wanted to say thank you. God bless you. Um, I guess what we're going to do is go ahead and start with a March 4th conversation that I had with the Lord. Um, that is the one that he is directing me to go ahead and put out this particular video. Um, so we'll start with it and then we'll go ahead and just allow the spirit to guide me. Um, as to where he wants me to start and what information he wants me to start talking about. Um, so let's just go ahead and find that particular video, Let, I mean that uh, conversation, and we'll turn it around so that you can read it as well. Um, these are my studies that I keep on a Google Doc, and I do it for the reason of being able to do a query. Um, which is helpful. I, had, I don't have it set up the way it needs to be done to to really be able to find some things, but I wanted to um, at least tell you why I was using Google Docs. At some point, I will go ahead and print it and put it in a book as well. So March the 4th is a personal conversation that I was having with the Lord, and he said to me, my dove, listen to me, for things shall occur in ways unbeknownst to you at this time, and when they do, Many will be thwarted and go forth unaimed and reckless, for they know not what to do. In the days to come, many will be unaware of the goodness that is abounding among them. Some will know, others may not. And when the time comes for those to understand the full truths that are being given unto you at this time, then they will know that my words to you have been true. When these things are given to those ahead of others at times, many will not receive the goodness therein until it is their time. Watch not, hear not, listen not to the scoffers, my child, for you are ahead of time in your understanding and goodness from my hand, firstborn of the many who will follow after due to your words and excitement of the way. When you know and understand these things, you will see the pivotal part that you have played in people's lives. Understanding this, then know that you had a purpose that was specific unto this time. You now, you know now what to say to show them the way. It is done now, my child. Release the information, allow it to be known, escape from the turmoil, trouble. My ways within you will make a path unto goodness, grace, and mercy, and you shall be given rest, my child, for your duty is done. I had him just said, Thank you, Lord. Upon the way you shall come, make way unto me, for I am waiting for your hand. My dove, listen to me now. Great things shall be taken forth and brought unto the many. You will see and know this to be true in the days ahead. And when you do, you will know that my hand has done this. Shalom. 
And I said, thank you, Lord. And that was the end of that particular conversation that I had that day. Now, that was March the 4th. Um, I have not had the opportunity to come and put a video out since that time, uh, specifically that I have just been swamped at work um, since January. And truly, with everything that has been going on in my life, I was mentally exhausted. There was just no way I could even sit down and focus and even uh, calm myself, really, with everything that I had been doing. We, my job is ready, set, run, and it has been that way for for months now, trying to prepare for a lot of things that are uh, going on at this time. So I have been working from home this last week. It has been very difficult um, as well. It's been very stressful, very, uh, very frustrating at times. Um, but I have a quiet day today. It's Sunday and I have some time to myself and the Lord and, um, and I'm going to go forth and put this video out as, as best as I can. Hopefully I can do it in uh, completely so that this will be my last video. Um, but you know, I'm open to his leading and if there's anything else he, um, wants me to say or to share, I am most definitely going to do so. Uh, in that March 4th conversation with the Lord, um, I was shocked to hear what he said to me. Um, he has said, lay down your pen at times before. He has told me also several weeks uh, prior to that, that I would be taking a leave of absence. I did not know exactly what that meant. Was it a leave of absence from work? Um, being homebound to work or was it, um, was it something else? Was it dealing with my job? Was it dealing physically? Was it dealing, um, you know, uh, with my, with my videos or, or what that meant exactly? I still don't know a hundred percent, but I was told I would be taking a leave of absence. So, um, I'm still, I'm sharing it. I don't know exactly what he is saying to me per se, because it could really tie into um, an awful lot of things. So um, in this message, he is saying, um, my duty is done. The things that he has led me to and the things that I have been um, looking into within the last year, he has finally um, brought, brought me to the point where I feel like I can, um, um, I feel like I can, move forward um, with the information that I'm going to give you. Now, do I know all of the answers? No, most definitely I do not. Um, but the thing about this is, is this whole journey for me um, has been about one-on-one -on -one with the Lord. My whole journey has been that way. Um, I sought him very, very deeply and intently to the point where I was asking quite a bit, Lord, you know, what am I to do? And he allowed me and gave me thoughts and, and things that in the very beginning I had no idea was him speaking to me. Okay. Um, I thought it was just my thought to go ahead and start writing down a journal. And when I started writing down the journal, um, about, you know, some of the things that I was studying and understanding, um, I would have questions in my mind and I would write down the questions. And what was so interesting is, is that within the next day or several days, the answer to that question or something that I ran across because I had another thought again to look at a particular scripture or to look in a particular book or to read a particular thing or to do some research online for a particular word or whatever it else that he has given me was what started answering some of these questions that I had. And it was at that point that I understood, okay, wait a minute. The Lord is answering me. He is hearing me, number one, and he is answering me, number two. And when he first opened my ear, Okay, when he first opened it to where I was able to hear things from him, okay, that tuning uh, to that frequency to hear him on a particular frequency. Um, and we've talked about this in the past videos. 
um, that I was able to hear maybe a particular word. And usually, and how it started for me was in the middle of the night when I wasn't on guard about anything and my spirit was open to what would could be, a, you know, spoken to me. And that is how it all started. A lot of people will receive dreams from the Lord because they have their defenses down and the spirit is open and they are able to go ahead and receive. Um, you know, your mind will play tricks on you a lot and will, in, and will insert a lot of self-doubt um, which which keeps people away from uh, believing that they're hearing from the Lord. But it is a thought process. It is a it is something that you will hear within your thoughts. Okay, and but but mind you, there are many voices that come into your mind, your own, um, the enemy, and the Lord. And so you have to go through and be able to discern and decipher who is speaking to you. Um, if it's, if it's thoughts about harm, if it's thoughts with anger and frustration and anything dealing with the flesh and, um, greed and all of those emotions, then you know that is not of God. Um, we've gone through and done all of these studies to identify what is the Spirit of God and what is not the Spirit of God. And so if anything ties into any of that, then you know that that is the enemy and you need to cast those out. Take every thought captive, right? Um, that is what the scripture tells us. If there's something that you truly want to do, um, I want to go to the beach this summer. I don't want this corona to, you know, cause a problem with my vacation. Or, you know, I want to be able to color my hair or, or buy that particular um, article of clothing or, you know, uh, you know or, or anything dealing with self and your self-motivated things, those are your own thoughts. Those are your own, okay? That's where that comes from. And then the other from the Lord is anything that is dealing with love and peace and kindness and humility, okay? To be humble. Um, any of that um, loving and kindness, all of those things. Now we have gone through and you can look it up in the Bible yourself or you can go back to the videos where we've done all of these studies, but it is identifying what is the Spirit of God and what is not the Spirit of God. Now we also went through and identified this as what is light and what is darkness? Um, we started bringing some of that stuff in. We just recently did a video where the Lord had given me the understanding. We dug into the word strife. And the word strife um, is actually darkness. Okay, so when we get frustrated and angry and upset and, and all of our emotions are swirling around, we're actually dabbling in the darkness. And so we needed to stay calm, stay out of the darkness, and stay calm, stay in the light. And that is a choice that we have because we're given free choice for everything. Okay. He's not going to sit there and say, why aren't you da 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 da? No, he's going to give you free choice. He's going to give you free reign for as long as you want to go down your own path. He will continue calling you. He will continue putting things in front of you to try and get you to turn, to return back to him, um, to come out of that. Um, but, it, and you know, a lot of times until you're ready, you're not going to do it, right? Until you're ready, you're not going to do it. But why aren't you ready? That's the whole thing. If your heart is so on fire for the Lord, then why aren't you ready? Everybody has hindrances in their life, no matter how much your heart is on fire for the Lord. Everybody has obstacles in their life that they have to overcome. Okay, that is a big word, overcome. We've delved into it in the past as well. Things that you're able to have not bother you anymore. Now, what is going on with that? Well, over all of these years, the Lord has been talking to us about open your heart to me, right? Let me see what's in there. A lot of times we go into prayer and we say, Lord, look into my heart. Please tell me what's in there. Okay. We've had to deal with wounds. We've had to deal with hurts. We've had to deal with old memories. We've had to deal with with lies that we believed from a young child that we didn't even know where it came from. We were so young, we, we don't even remember the instance, but there was a lie that was believed, okay? And so what God will do is he will shine his love upon that. 
He will bring that out of you. He will re have you recall that whole situation and point light at it, point love at it, point peace at it, and point truth at it to the point where that heals you. Okay? That fills you and that heals you. Okay? And so that is some of the reasons why the Lord is having us take a look at what is inside. Um, everybody's path is different in regards to this because everybody's got all different kinds of experiences and things that have happened. Some in this life, some in others. Okay? Now, a lot of people... Um, get upset when I talk about that. I'm not talking about this physical body. This physical body is not who I am. This physical body is nothing but a vessel. It is a shell. It is a vessel that I am able to at least partly enter into. Okay. My whole soul cannot fit into this because of the different, the, the different parts and of everything that my soul encompasses, but my body and this physical realm cannot even receive all of that. However, we are here to learn. We are here to mature. We are here to go ahead and continue to, to get ourselves to another level. Okay? And every time that we come, recall that the Lord told me many years ago, you were at the cross. Well, how was I at the cross? In what form was I at the cross? Was I in a body? Was I not in a body? Was I there in the spirit? Was I, where was I? Where, what was going on with that? And some of the other visions that the Lord has given me and downloads in regards to that time. Um, we shared all of that in these videos. So we know for a fact that Jesus said, um, if you so believe that, um, that, um, that, um, John the Baptist comes in the spirit of Elijah. Well, how can that be? Okay. So a lot of people say the Bible says there's no reincarnation. I'm not going to dabble into reincarnation. I really am not because I cannot answer how it can be, but it is. Okay. I don't know how it can be. Is it just the consciousness of it all? Is it just the mind? Because now remember when we did the word study on uh, the word, right? The, the, the word study on word, word is also logos. And logos not only means speech, but it means thought. So it could mean either one. And so, you know, is it just the consciousness that comes in to learn and experience things through here? Or how, how does it work, guys? I don't know how it works. I don't have all of the answers to everything, but I know for a fact it is. Okay? I know for a fact it is. Um, so, you know, if you want to dig into that a little bit more and, you know, Lord, how is this working? Show me. I'm sure he will share what you are ready to receive. I'm almost positive. <laughs> he will share what you are ready to receive and he will share things more than you think you're ready to receive because, excuse me, a lot of times he'll give me something. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I have to go through and look it up and try to figure it out. But then later on, the Lord brings it back and he starts giving me little pieces and nuggets and little things. And it all starts making sense. Okay, Lord, I get it. I understand a little bit more. Do I understand it all? No. Okay. Do I understand enough to be able to move forward so that you can continue taking me down this path? Yes. Okay. He will not move you forward until you are ready. Okay. And he will not give you what you are not ready to receive. So a lot of you out there that are saying, you know, um, pray for me about this or pray for me about that. I, I have entered into prayer and I have um, prayed about some of the things that you've asked for. But the other part of it is, is I'm also praying that you are ready to receive. Um, because a lot of times some of this information that the Lord has given, you know, you're just like, what, you know, what is he, what is he saying here? Uh, you know, I've had a lot of people come against me saying, uh, well, you're new age. I've never even read anything new age. I have no idea what I'm talking about is what the Lord is telling me, you know. So maybe some of the new agers got some stuff right. Or or you're you're talking about, you know, this or that. I can't help what I'm talking about. I haven't dabbled into anything except sharing what the Lord is telling me. So, 
you know, there's a little truth there, there's a little truth there, there's a little truth there. And these are the things that he is bringing to us to try and take a look at so that we understand. I think when I tell you where he has pointed me and how he has brought me to this point, you can look back on my channel, okay, for years and see that he has been trying to point us to this all along, okay? He has been trying to show us all along. So now, what I'm going to tell you is, I have understanding about meet you in the middle. I have understanding and uh, about the phoenix that I did a video on, um, and that I got nailed to a cross about. I have understanding about the death and the birth video, about the circle, about the waters, about the land in a circle with the waters around, the as above, so below, which was another one that I got nailed to a cross on, about Atlantis and being, and being brought back to that, about the mirror image, about the rose, about love blooming, about congeal. Do you all even remember congeal? How about like five years ago, I drew a circle. Let me see if I can draw it here. When he first gave me the information, even before I was able to do the Maseroth, he, he gave me a dream and I had to get up in the middle of the night and I had to um, write down what uh, what he was showing me, right? And so I knew that there was, he gave me the circle and he gave me, he told me do it in four quarters and then he told me the word congeal. Um, now this might be showing backwards in here for some reason it flips things around. But this, if you're looking at a map of Australia, Australia, this would be in the area where Queensland is. Okay. Um, it is the upper right quadrant. Okay. Um, very interesting about that congeal. And if you look at the Enoch calendar, which a lot of people have been asking for lately, and I hope that you're able to open it up and read it. Uh, somebody asked me, um, do I have it in a PDF? Uh, I, I don't know how to make that into a, uh, I don't think you can adjust what I, what I have out there. And if you can, uh, you can save it in a PDF, but no, I have not done it in a PDF. Um, I don't think that you're able to, um, to maneuver what is in that particular one, uh, to answer that person's question. Um, but congeal, remember we were all like, well, what is he talking about congeal? Well, I know what he's talking about now. So, um, how about being here before? Okay. How about the pearl and the pearl of great price? How about the hem of the pearl where we, that the whole hem of the pearl is the story about you coming down, get, taking the pearl from the beast and going back up. Remember, that's what that whole thing was about. How about, how about, how about the Song of Songs? How about all of this stuff that the Lord has been trying to show us? It's all being understood now in what I'm getting ready to tell you. So the words that the Lord is saying to me is, um, you now know the way. This is it. Share it. Get it out there. Um, tell them how I gave it to you. Um, and, you know, plug some things in, show some things, and then, you know, and then, and then I'm done, guys. I'm done. Um, so let's, I talked about several things June of last year, and I have not had a, had a chance to share it with you. I'm being led right now to talk to you about it. And this is about the green dreams. Now, I've made mention of these a couple of times before, uh, but I've never really come back to share those. I don't know why. I guess now. Um, is the time for me to go ahead and share those because they directly connect into where the Lord has been leading. So let me go ahead and pause this video. I'm going to go back into my studies. I'm going to find the two green dreams that I had um, because I want to talk with you in terms of um, how he started showing me about the color green. Okay, so just a moment. Okay, so... Um, Notice the date of this dream. This this particular one was back June the 24th uh, in 2019, almost a year ago. 
Um, a lot of this stuff that the Lord is um, now wanting me to share, he originally introduced it um, almost a year ago. And so um, if anything, I need to say that I have not jumped on the bandwagon and ran with it without understanding um, and confirming with the Lord that this is the way that he wanted us to go. So let's go ahead and read this particular dream. So on June the 24th, it was Saturday night into Sunday morning. I had this dream and I say it's a dream, but I really felt like I was there in the spirit. Okay. So it's another one of those where I, I was actually there. Um, it was very interesting. I saw a being in front of me and I do not know if it was male or female. Um, I was not made aware of that particular issue, but I was standing right in front of it and I could see that there was green on this particular being, not the whole body, uh, but just up in the head area and actually over the forehead, like where the brain would be. It was that area of, of this person or this being that had green on it. Okay. So I was being made aware that this was just not like a generic green color, but this was specifically emerald green. Okay. Emerald green is what I was made to understand. So emerald green was over the brain or the forehead area of this particular person or being that was standing in front of me. And uh, in this um, experience that I had, let me just say this, I was going to show this person my power um, that I had been trying to learn. I was learning how to house my power. Um, and I extended my arm toward this person with my palm facing, facing it. Okay. But the being then extended their arm and faced their palm toward me. And I could tell that their power was much stronger than mine. Um, I knew that I was just learning. I was just beginning. Um, but I thought this was very strange. This being actually with the power that he extended or she extended from the palm of her hand, okay, actually lifted me up off the floor um, by the power that was coming out of their palm. I didn't see any light. I didn't see any color. I didn't see anything coming out of the palm. It's just a force that seemed to be levitating me up off the floor about five inches or so. And I turned and I looked at some of the people that were around me and said, look, my feet are not touching the floor. I was super excited about this and I just started wagging my feet in the air. Uh, so mind you, this was not a scary thing, but it appeared to be a teaching lesson of some sort. And so I wanted to make note that um, as there appears to be some significance to the emerald green um, being at the forehead and um, at that point, I really wasn't understanding, but it seemed to point, point to connecting um, uh, uh, being about the mind of God. So um, let's talk about that for just a minute, because when I first had that dream and I understood that that was emerald green, the very first thing that popped into my mind was the green around the throne. Okay. Um, where it talks about the red and the white stones um, or the red and the white uh, colors being around the throne. But it also says that the halo was like an emerald green around the throne. And so when I, uh, when I awoke and started to notate that particular dream or experience down, I understood that that emerald green was very significant. It was important and I needed to remember it. Um, but that's where my mind went. Okay. It went to the, the halo that was around the throne. And that was what I was being made to understand. So when I was in front of this being, I did this. Okay. That's all I did. I didn't do anything else. I wasn't, you know, whatever was, you know, going to come through my palm. That's the way it looked. It didn't look like there was anything coming out of it. And when that person in front of me did it to me and lifted me right up off the ground, I was ecstatic. I, I, I thought it was, you know, obviously this person uh, was a lot further down the journey uh, than I was. Uh, and what we're learning in the spirit or at night when we're asleep, guys, 
or what our soul is learning or what our, you know, I have no idea how it all works, but I know that we talk to God at night and I know that he talks to us. And I know that we go through learning and we go through studies and we go through um, lessons of this sort where we're learning all different kinds of things. So, um, you know, a lot of times people say, well, I, I, I wake up and I don't remember my dreams. How am I going to be able? And listen, I approached the Lord with the same thing uh, several years back, you know, and he says, I said, Lord, how am I going to be able to remember all that? I can't even remember all my dreams, you know, and I'm trying to, you know, la, 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 la. And the Lord said, but your spirit remembers. Oh, that's exactly right. Your spirit does remember. So um, your soul remembers. Okay. Because that's who you are. You're not this flesh. Okay. You're not a body that houses a spirit. Uh, which is what everyone is taught. You are a soul, okay, that has come into a body to learn and to continue growing, okay? So it's it's different. It's not that you're just this body and that this body houses that spirit. Um, you know, this body right here is not who I am. It It, it is... It is in the minds of those that don't understand it. Um, this body is just a vessel for me. This body is just a house per se as to um, be able to welcome in my part of my God. Okay. So this is not your soul. That's who you are. And you have been alive for a very long time. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Lord told me back in the beginning. He told me you are in Genesis, okay, um, which was another, you know, like, oh, Lord, what are you talking about, okay? Um, so understand who you are, truly who you are, and who you are in relation to him, because that's truly who you are. This body is not who you are. What you do on this earth is not who you are. What you're learning through this earth is who you are is helping who you are to grow and mature because we all have to get to a particular level. So um, once you understand that you're a soul that has been here for a very long time, remember God knew you before you were in your mother's womb. Okay. So it, it's not a body thing. This is our temple. Okay. This is where the spirit of God will be housed. Okay. But this, physical body is is a shell from the earth it came to it will go back dust to dust you know but who is within you the real you that soul will never die okay and it continues on so um so i was talking to the lord that was the first emerald green dream that i had so not only was i made to understand emerald green was very very important okay June of last year, um, I was also understanding that, wait a minute, we, we're, we're learning about powers that we are going to be using, certain things. There was no sword, there was no gun, there was no ropes or chains or any kind of barbaric thing that was going to stop anybody to, to do whatever. It was my hand going out and whatever power came out of it, um, was stopping what was going on. Uh, the power that came against me lifted me right on up. And I was, I was like, oh my gosh, you know. So we're learning new things, okay, and our powers. Remember the Lord told me, you will, you will go forth in peace and calm, calm, okay. We, 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 we learned and understood that is our strength. And we talked about that. We looked at those scriptures. So we're going to be able to hear him in thought. Okay. Now remember, when people are up in the heavenlies, and I don't know why this keeps popping up. Y'all have to excuse it. I'm having problems with my screen nomadic stuff. But um, it's, te it's telepathy. You don't even have to talk in the spirit. 
when you when you have a when you have a vision that is given to you you also have a download of information or understanding in regards to that vision you don't have people sitting there saying now this happened and that happened and this is why and all no it comes to you like within seconds you have an immediate understanding about what's what you're what you're being shown okay so that is how things are going to happen um, so our our learning how to use our our tools is what I'm going to say not really weapons they're tools they're things that we can use to help calm to help um, protect to help um, explain to help do a lot of different things um, so guys, when we when we think about things like this, and we've talked about, oh, we're going to learn how to use our weapons. Mm -mm. No, we're we're going to learn how to use our tools. Okay, these are things that are being given unto us to use, and we will walk forth in peace and calm. We will walk forth in peace and calm. Okay, all right. So let me turn this back around. I want to talk to you about the second green dream. This second one was. The second one will probably uh, speak to a lot of people. Let me go ahead and um, get down to the next green. I'm just doing a query. Um, okay. So here's this other dream. Now, guys, I put here the date. It was August 13, 2019, and I said, oh, my goodness, the date. Now, let me talk to you all about that. Do you all remember that document that I put out that said he is far-reaching, and it was in regards to... Um, the the three days that I went to this place and I was trying to find my mother and I was in Anna's house and all of that okay um, that particular document date was given to me on that very date okay that date August the 13th is a specific date um, that the Lord gave me and we weren't sure what was going on with it and why but I made several videos in regards to that particular document and I talked about that date um, I didn't know what it meant or why or what was going on, but the inf the green the second green dream that he gave me he gave to me on that date. So let's talk. Let's go ahead and turn this around, and take a look at it because it's very important that we understand um, what he's trying to say. So I'm saying here, August thirteenth, twenty nineteen. I said my dream last night was just so beautiful. I'm trying to understand it, and I hope that clarity can be provided uh, regarding it it included emerald green again so i do have clarity on it um, so let's go ahead and start talking about this i was near a vehicle and i realized um, that we needed to get something from the house that was up this stairway or up this ladder and i went over and i climbed it and i got and as i got to the top there was a door and as I opened the door, in the doorway was George Strait, okay, in an emerald suit with an emerald green hat on. He was beaming and he was shining. And I said to him, oh my goodness, you are just shining all over. You are just beaming. It was this green, this emerald green light that was just beaming off George Strait. Now, I need to say to you here, and I'm going to come back, he was in green, okay, emerald green, and he was shining. Now, I don't know if it was green from the club, if he was shining a light and it just appeared to be, um, it just appeared to be emerald kind of green coming off of him because he was shining so bright, which is what I'm leaning more toward. He wasn't green. He was not a green being. Um, George Strait was like, looked like me and you, but he was shining. He was beaming. Um, and he had a green hat and a, and green, a green suit on. So I don't think he was beaming green, but the, be but the brightness of the green and the brightness of him shining was just like, wow. Okay. So let me turn this back around. We'll continue reading. So here he is standing in the doorway. After I opened the door, here he is standing in the doorway, beaming down at me. And he reached his hand out to me. And as he was helping me up, 
Um, he did reach his arm out and he helped me over the last step of the ladder and in through the door and into the house. And I was just so excited to be there with him. I was amazed. I was like, wow, look at you. You're just glowing. You are just beaming with this green light. Okay. So um, I said, oh, Lord, it is just so beautiful. Now, I knew then at that point that he was representing the Lord. Okay. And I went looking through, and as I was asking him a question like, where is, and I don't recall what I was asking, um, but I was asking something like, where was his mother, or some other question. But I was asking, the, as I was asking the question, like, where is your mother, um, she came out. She was also in the house. Okay, so I've climbed up this ladder. He helped me up over the last step. He pulled me into the house. I'm asking where the mother is, and she shows up. So I have the Lord in front of me. Again, this emerald green. He is beaming, and here is the mother. Okay. Now, I had to go into the kitchen for a utensil. Um, I think that was what I needed uh, for this vehicle. That was something that I was looking for. I don't know why. Um, but I knew that I had put it in my hand, whatever tool that was needed, I put it in my hand. And I hate to say it was a utensil, but it was some type of tool that I needed to collect and to take back down to the vehicle. And so I collected it, and as I was going back to the door to go back down, I was not sure if I, if he had already gone down, I'm talking about the Lord, George Strait, or if I had to go down um, or what, but I had to slip through the door to go down quickly not to be stopped. So I'm not sure if um, the mother was going to stop me for some reason, but I felt like I needed to get out quickly because I saw that there was something big and dangerous coming and I wanted to get through and warn. So I slipped out and I went down the ladder or the steps and I went down toward the vehicle and I was asking people around the vehicle, is he here? Is he in the vehicle? And I said, listen, something is coming. We've got to hurry. And that was the end of the dream. So now what I wanted to make mention of, and I think I made note of it here, um, it, the, the interesting part is in regards to George Strait, and that is the spelling of his last name, which is spelled S-T-R-A-I-T, which is the same spelling, okay, when the Bible speaks about the straight and narrow path. It is spelled the same way in the Bible, S-T-R-A-I-T, which is very interesting. Now, this is also the second time where the emerald green is in the dream. Um, and again, it brought back to mind about the emerald green around the throne. So the fact that he was just glowing, he pulled me up into the house. The house can represent something. George Strait represents something. The ladder and the pathway within also, too. The color, the vehicle. There's a lot of information here in regards to this dream. Um, so the straight and narrow path. The stairway and ladder. He reached out his hand. He pulled us up in there. He is far-reaching. Notice the date. I thought this was very, very interesting. He was just beaming and glowing. He was in the house. Is that the mansion? Is that the castle? What is it? Uh, we are part of the whole, part of the creator. Mother was there. Father God, Mother God. Now recall, we talked about that. Two being one, two being one, and all of those dreams, I mean, all of those videos that we talked about in regards to the family. So I had to go and get a tool and come back down. Now recall that the Lord has, has let us know that we are, there are going to be some, they're going to be back and forth from heaven and back to be able to bring things from heaven down to earth. That is the way that it is going to, to, to happen. Um, I thought this was interesting. So I know that we are being fitted with our gifts and our tools. Um, and I asked in the dream if he was in the vehicle, and at times vehicles represent our ministry, um, and, but it also can represent us um, as a temple to house God, the final temple built. So he did infill us. Was that what this was? So 
Um, very interesting information in regards to all of this. The it is look up to see what emerald green is. Um, when you look up some of these things, look up to see what some of these things are representing. But guys, I know what the Lord has conveyed to me, and I understand what He has conveyed to me. Um, it is no mistake that George Strait was in that, and that word straight is the same straight that is in the Bible. I think it's very, very interesting. Um, so there's a lot going on in regards to this. Um, I'm going to bounce back and just go back up to uh, the first green dream that I had because um, I want to show you how far back that the Lord has been showing me things, okay? So this is uh, June the 24th. The other one was August. And the Lord started um, talking to me about as above, so below. Okay, he brought me from the green dreams. He taught, he was talking to me about as above, so below. He is pointing to some things. Um, he's talking about the way. This is when we started first introducing about all of that. Um, and he's talking about, and this is when I went in to go into about the logos is the mind of God. Um, we're talking about the color and all of that. Um, we did a study on that. Um, and then he's, and I did an extensive study on that, um, I thought was very interesting. I went into Strong's with it, um, and I just wanted to um, get a full understanding as to what it is. Um, when I continued about Christ as the Logos, uh, because Christ as the mind of God, the, the Christ consciousness of God, um, guess what come up? The word Sijiji. Um, which is another word that the Lord gave me years ago. Um, if you guys have been following my videos, um, you know, that came out, Sijiji. Um, he started leaning me toward the Emerald Tablets, um, and I started looking at the one with, with the author of Dennis Hawk. Um, and what really got me was, is when I went back to um, start looking at this, I mean, I, I started looking at this back in June of last year, but he has brought me back to it all over this past year. And so it wasn't something that he said, delve in and take a look at this. He has, he's been pointing to it and then he would teach me something. He would come back and point me to something else and then he would teach me something. And then he would come back and point me something else and he was teaching me something. Um, what is interesting here is that this is talking about Atlantis which is something that he has been showing me just off on its own about the round, uh, and we did a video on this too, is about the round, the round land that had the, the circle land with the water in between, the circle land and all of that. We were talking about Atlantis. We were talking about um, what he was trying to point us to here. And we went in and, and talked about all of that. Um, he talked about, remember that he said, um, in several videos back where he's saying um, about the mirror, about the reflection and the mirror image of me you will be. Well, when I went back to take a look at some of this, it's it's talking about here about the, the mirror image. And so um, there's a lot of information here in these emerald tablets. That is one that he is wanting you to look at. Um, emerald being the one thing that he showed me both in those dreams this is something that is very important in here that he wants you to look at, okay? Um, I continued going on into other things. This is still about the Emerald Tablet. And then I understood that it was the alchemy of personal transformation. So um, let's talk about that a little bit because a lot of people are going to see that word alchemy, okay? And they're going to say, well, wait a minute, that's dealing with changing lead into gold, and that's physical things, and that's, you know, all of this different things. Okay, so there is a physical part to alchemy, but there's also a spiritual part to alchemy. Okay, um, it is the physical, it is, it is not the physical, it is the spiritual transformation that happens within you. Um, there are several different stages that you have to go through in regards to this. Um, and this is something that I'm just getting into right now um, because of questions that I've asked about the experiences that I've shared about going into the courts and having 
who, you know, have uh, being asked to, uh, to be married and then to have the, um, the experiences that I shared with you about something coming within me. And then he was talking about the rose and the blooming of the rose and all of that. I mean, I'm still questioning the Lord as, what is this all about? I mean, you know, why am I given these experiences and what's going on with it? And guys, I'm here to tell you now, um, I've gone in and I've explained those experiences, but that experience that I had that I explained to you is only halfway. Okay. When the Lord says to some of you, I'm going to meet you in the middle, then that is where he meets you in the middle. Regarding the last video, the Lord was telling me, um, are you going to go all the way? Remember? And we didn't, we were like, well, what are you talking about, Lord? And I have been seeking him on this, like, Lord, please help me understand exactly what it is. We kind of talked a little bit about some things as to what it was. And it's because he said to me, you asked for my hand, I gave you my hand. And then that conjunction happened. And then he said, are you, are you willing to go all the way? Okay. So that tells you right there, it's, it's not finished. We started talking about that. Well, what are you talking about? Lord, there's, there's more. There's more. Okay. So the first information about that conjunction and the first union, the first merge and converge where he actually gives us his hand is the middle. There's more. You have to go through the rest of this spiritual alchemy process. Okay, so that at the end, you can give him your hand. Okay, and the only way I knew that is from that message that I started this video with on March the 4th, where he says, you can now give me your hand. Okay, so there is a whole long spiritual process uh, in spiritual alchemy. Recall that he was pointing us to this as well. Remember about which mountain is it? Where, where, you know, where is this stuff at? Which mountain is it? And then we, we looked into one particular mountain and when they did some digging in the mountain, they found some of this white powder that could, you know, change elements and different things of that in metals and, and things of that nature. Recall those videos. The Lord has been pointing us to this all along. Okay, it is a it is a process. Some say it's seven steps. Um, that's what I've run across is that it's seven steps, but um, it's stages of spiritual transformation within you. Okay, turning lead into gold. Now, I don't mean the actual gold metal. I mean within us. Okay, recall all of those times in videos where he is, he was telling us, um, um, and we, when we shared things that he, he was kind of laying on our heart about the fire, right? Refining the gold about the pearl and it's the agitation the, of the sand, you know, the agitating and, 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 and causing such a, uh, a, a strenuous issue that that pearl is created. And so there's, it, it is a process. It is not an easy process. Um, but it is a process that we have to go through. We, that white stone that they talk about in the Bible. Okay. That has your name on it. It can only be your name because it is only your process. Okay. And everybody's pathway and process is going to be different. Okay. That's why it has your name on it. Okay. But things that happen within us and things are changed into that stone. Um, a lot of people will say it's a philosopher's stone. Um, but a philosopher's stone, AKA is the pearl of great price. That's what it is. Now, Let's go back and think about the hymn of the pearl by Thomas. He, he was in prison. He said, I have a story for you. And he, he told him, he told this story. He told about, um, the, the sun or, or someone coming out, out of the heavens. He came down. Um, he changed whatever to come down so that he could be here 
in the area where the beast is, okay, to be able to get the pearl from the beast to be able to go on back up. But recall, he he fell asleep or he um he he became one with what was going on down here and they had to send a letter from up above to be able to waken him and have him remember and recognize the reason why he is here and so people awaken to that idea and go oh my goodness you know why are we here what what's going on you know that's when you know you're starting to awaken is when you start to question there's got to be more than life than just going to the store and working and you know, and, and, and doing all of this, there is, there is a lot of other things that are going on. And so, um, that's when you start to awaken. And so, um, you come down into the area where the beast is because this is our training ground. This is where we're agitated and, um, refined and matured and becoming, becoming, we are cultivating ourselves. Do you understand? Once we get to that point, once we go through that spiritual alchemy process, up we go again. Okay? So guys, the Lord is telling me to share this with you. Okay? And I need you to understand that this is not something that I've just jumped in to share with you. You can see that he's been leading me and guiding me on it since June of last year. Um, I wasn't going to jump in on some stuff I was unfamiliar with. I needed to pray and I needed to confirm and I needed to be in, to be sure that this is where he is leading me. This is where he is leading me. You need to look at the Emerald Tablets and you need to look and understand about the stages of spiritual alchemy. You need to. Because that is the pathway that we need to go. Okay? There is a... In the Bible, the very first miracle that Jesus did was turn water into wine. That is the very first miracle. He took water, a substance, and turned it into another substance. Okay? That is what happens. When you make wine here at home, you go through a whole fermentation process. Okay? There's more to it, but one part of it is the fermentation process. And so um, that's where all of the yeast, when you put yeast in stuff, it just bubbles up and starts to bubble up and it makes everything all murky and cloudy. And as that yeast starts to die, it starts to fall to the bottom of your container that you're trying to make your wine in. And all of those little pieces start to fall to the bottom because they're dying. Um, we're supposed to follow what the Christ did. Okay? He died and he rose again. Okay, anew. He was born anew, right? Okay, when all of those little yeast particles start to die, they actually turn into ethanol. Okay, which is how the wine starts to get its alcohol content. It turns into ethanol. So it breaks it down from one uh, substance and turns it into another substance. That was Jesus' first miracle, okay? And he's trying to show us as the Christ, as the mind of God, as the Son of God, the Word, the Logos, the thought, okay, that this is something that has to be done. His mother said, do exactly as he tells you. She's telling you this is part of the process, okay? So a lot of people will look at the Bible and say, oh, this is a historical document. A lot of people will look at the Bible and say, I only understand this on the physical. You got to, you got to see it through spiritual eyes. Okay. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible. There's a lot that is there that, you, that people will walk right through and they will just like, well, I don't understand it because spiritually you're not understanding it. Okay. Take some time and ask the Lord to open your eyes to some of this stuff, okay? That part of fermentation is one of the stages in spiritual alchemy, okay? We have to die. How about that time when I shared in a video that I said, Lord, I was at work, and I said, Lord, 
you know, what is going on with my body? I feel sick. I got dark circles under my eyes. And, and truly, I didn't even go into everything that I was feeling. I thought I was dying. I really did. I, I, there were days I didn't want to get up every morning. I just, I did not want to get up out of bed. I just didn't want to have to deal with anything more. I mean, I was already going through all of this. I was feeling bad. I was not feeling good at all. And I was trying to get through and figure out what was going on. And the Lord answered me. Do you all remember that? Let, let me pull it because I know that's in my, I know that's in my planner because I was at work when I wrote it. So let me go, let me go back because this is very important because some of the stuff that he said to me that very day that I didn't understand is going to make a little bit more sense to some of you all now. So let me find, uh, let me find where that was. Golly, I must have been back in, here it is. It was back in uh, the last month of January. So um, this is the note that I wrote down because I had somebody in my office. I couldn't talk. I had to talk per I had to talk through my thoughts to the Lord. And so this is what it says. It was 1.30 at 2 p.m. I said, Lord, why am I so tired? I look at my eyes and I look sick with dark circles. What's going on with my body? I was starting to recognize there was something going on, even though this was a spiritual um, transformation. This was a spiritual uh, fermentation where things were starting to die. I was feeling it in my body as well. Um, this is what he said to me, and I shared it already in a video, but I just, I want to bring it up again. So it says, my love, it is time to renew, to reform, to rebase. Now, at first I thought to rebase, what does that mean? Well, if you think about spiritual alchemy or you think about alchemy where it's turning lead to gold, you now have a new base. This was very interesting. I I was shocked because back in January, I didn't know what he was talking about, right? It's time to renew, to reform, to rebase. Okay. Another day or two will be enough to have what we need to move forward. Does this make sense to you? I'm like, no, Lord, what are you talking about? I got to go through another, a little bit of time. You know, what are you talking about? Now I know what he's talking about. That fermentation process had to be complete. I had to go through it all. I said, no, not really, Lord, can you explain? So this is what he finally told me at the end. He said, my love, you have many things about you forthcoming. Many things were changing. Your mind alert. Your body changed. Your ways gone. When you know and understand this, you will know. Okay, so when he told me that back in January, uh, last week of January, I didn't, I didn't really know what he was talking about, but I understand it a little bit more now. Okay, there is a process that happens. And when you have that first union, that first, I'm going to call it a marriage, that first part where he gives you your hand, that union where something is deposited within you, you are only halfway. You've got to go all the way so that you can give him your hand at the very end. So from what I understand, there is a process coming into the part where that union is, that merge and converge, that deposit within you, which is halfway, and after that is the fermentation. And then there's that process until you're able to give him your hand. It almost seems like it's two marriages. Um, but I think it's just two parts of it. Because the Lord is saying to me, especially in the last video, are you willing to go all the way? Okay. He showed us the pathway to walk. He showed us the things that were going to happen. Okay, he did. He died. He rose anew. Okay, we have to die and rise anew. And there are other things that has to happen. Okay, that, that, that pearl of great price, which is spoken of in the Bible, is that stone. Guys, I don't know all of it. I don't know all the bits and pieces and parts. I don't know 
100% of any of it. I am still learning and walking through it. And I am pressing and asking and asking and asking and asking, Lord, what are you talking about? And this is where I'm at. Okay. He led me also to last year to a um, 1700s author by the name of Swedenborg. Swedenborg. Okay. When I had that experience about the union and the merge and all of that before, you know, all of that, I went, I went looking and I came across, uh, I really felt like I was led because why would I have found a 1700 um, author, but his name, his last name is Swedenborg, S-W-E-D-E-N-B-O-R-G, and he speaks in great detail about an awful lot that I can confirm through the experiences that the Lord has told me. Now, I haven't read all of his stuff. Is is all that he has accurate and true? You know, is anybody's? We're all given pieces and parts of something. So it's not until we are completely one and, you, and merged with our God that we will know all. So take what information resounds within you as nuggets, hold them and move on and continue your journey forward. So, um, so guys, I just want to say that the Lord has... The Lord has brought me here. I've still continued to question him in regards to it. Um, I need for you to understand that this is what he wants me to share with you. Um, something else that was very interesting. Um, beginning of March, the Lord, I was laying in bed. I I stayed up late reading. I uh, was doing some reading in the, um, in the Emerald Tablet stuff, and I... Um, my husband was already asleep. I just basically laid down in the bed and cut the lights off and was just kind of praying to the Lord. And I, um, he said to me, as soon as the, I laid down and started talking, he said, you are pushing through. And I said, in my mind, I said, yes, Lord. And I basically was like, I know that he keeps telling me, you know, I'm going to get you through. But that's not what he said. And when I finally recognized, he said, you are pushing through. I'm like, well, wait a minute, Lord, what are you talking about? Pushing through what? And he said, the grid. The grid. And I thought, what are you talking about? The grid, the matrix? What are you talking about? Um, but as I said that in question to him, I started hearing female voices. Um, I started hearing them like calling each other to come. And, um, and it was, it was clear enough and loud enough to me that I could pick it up that it sounded like they were very near. And so I, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm hearing female voices. What is this? Who is this? Is, is, you know, and he said, this is your family. They're waiting for you to come through. So I didn't know what the grid was. Um, there is something called the Christ grid. Uh, I don't know much about it. I am starting to look into it. Um, it is something that he says I am pushing through. Now, my understanding is, is when we push through that and get through that, we have family there waiting for us to welcome us. Um, I don't know, but that's what he told me. Okay, so more information that you can have to try and look into, to seek the Lord about, to try and figure out what's going on. But guys, um, that's what he told me. So I'm going to come back and let me just go through here right quick to see if there's anything else. Um, let's see. If he says anything else. Um, this is where the marriage proposal and all of that, you guys remember that? Um, he's talking to me about that. So this is almost a whole year's worth of notes here. Um, personal notes, things like that. Um, oh, something else I do want to tell you. Um, he said something to me most recently, um, beginning of this month. He said, signed, sealed, and delivered. That's what he said. He said, signed, sealed, and delivered. And when I looked that up, I understood that to mean, 
like a deed, uh, like uh, ownership. Some, something has been signed, sealed, and delivered. You own it now. It is your possession. I mean, he said to me in a message prior to that, which I didn't understand, but he did say to me that you are my own possession. Um, so I wanted to bring that to you as well. So, um, guys, this is such an interesting concept with everything that he is trying to show me and everything that I am still trying to learn. I'm still trying to finish my walk out myself, my pathway. But guys, this is it. This connects to everything that he has been showing us, everything that he has been talking to us about, all of it. And, you know, he gives me stuff like the word, the grid. I'm like, what are you talking about? The grid? What, you know, what does that mean? You know, I'm not digging into all of these other religions or different things or anything like that. I'm not doing anything but talking to the Lord. So I know the information that he's given me is true and accurate. He keeps telling me that. And, um, and I, you know, guys, that's all I can tell you. Seek him. Ask him about it. Because it certainly is very important. The Emerald Tablets, the stages to spiritual alchemy, and all of these other things that I've been talking to you about. Go back into some of these videos. It's all there. He has been pointing us to it all this time. And it's finally now time for it to come out. It connects into everything that I have been talking about. Um, it's just... It's, it's a lot. Guys, go forth, pray, ask for confirmation. I'm going to come back to that March 4th message. Um, I want to start the video with it. I want to end the video with it um, so we can go ahead and talk about um, signing off. Hang on just a moment. Here's something else, too, I wanted to show you um, while I was trying to find that message. Um, this is something that says, um, what is alchemy? Um, I want to go up just a little bit more um, because um, this is where I'm starting to look into the seven stages, spiritual alchemy stages and what it means. Um, and it says here, it's easy to dismiss alchemy as an ancient and outmoded form of chemistry, a stumbling block along the history of scientific thought. For that is, for the most part, what people outside of spiritual circles do. It gives to the uninitiated a somewhat comical impression. A loony man's thirst for material wealth leads him to believe that it's possible to turn lead into gold. And likewise, a most uh, like most occult practices, the true value of alchemy is hidden underneath much obscure symbolism, warding off mu the muggles and keeping the secrets within. What alchemy is actually fixated on is spiritual development, with the end goal being a state of awareness, completion, and harmony. If you're saying that this sounds familiar, you're right. It's familiar to the states that we see in other religious or esoteric traditions. Remember, he brought us to esoteric, including the tarot cards, Buddhism, and all of that. But alchemy is another thread that links all religions and faith into the vast net of spirituality. So, what is alchemy? All right. Here we'll follow the trace of and uh, trace the metaphor of creating the philosopher's stone from prima materia, which is your first substance. That's what that means. That's what you've got within you before you go through the process. Um, so you turn what you have into the philosopher's stone. Now, the philosopher's stone, aka, is the pearl of great price. So this process is of the human spirit being broken, remade, tested, and reborn again. The process is of the human spirit being broken, remade, tested, and born again. Let me see if I can find my message. Says my dove, listen to me, for things shall occur in ways unbeknownst to you at this time. 
And when they do, many will be thwarted and go forth unaimed and reckless, for they know not what to do. In the days to come, many will be unaware of the goodness that is abounding among them. Some will know, others may not. And when the time comes for those to understand the full truths that are being given unto you at this time, then they will know that my words to you have been true. When things are given to those ahead of others at times, many will not receive the goodness therein until it is their time. Watch not, hear not, listen not to the scoffers, my child, for you are ahead of time in your understanding and goodness from my hand. Firstborn of the many who will follow after due to your words and excitement of the way. When you know and understand these things, you will see the pivotal part that you had played in people's lives. Understanding this, then know that you had a purpose that was specific unto this time. You know now what to say to show them the way. It is done, my child. Release the information. Allow it to be known. Escape from the turmoil and trouble. My ways within you will make a path unto goodness, grace, and mercy, and you shall be given rest, my child, for your duty is done. Upon the way you shall come. Make way unto me, for I am waiting for your hand. You will see and know this to be true. Oh, excuse me, my dove, listen to me now. Great things shall be taken forth and brought unto the many. You will see and know this to be true in the days ahead. And when you do, you will know that my hand has done this. Shalom. Okay, guys. So, um, so that is the deal. That is, um, that is the end of my, of my YouTube journey, I guess. Um, when you look into um, a lot of the stages that are after the firm fermentation, um, you're going to notice that one of them says coagulation. Um, sometimes you can look at things that say coagulation, and the other term that they use is the term congeal, which is what he gave us in the very beginning. So guys, um, it links to everything. It links to everything that the Lord has given us. Um, he has given us little pieces and parts and nuggets all along the way. And so, guys, I ask that you go forth and you just seek your God and know that he is light and he is love and he is goodness and he has provided a path for you if you are willing to receive it. Are you ready to receive it? Um, I pray that I will, I will be in prayer for anyone that is looking over this video and just saying, if you don't understand it again, as I've said in the past, if you don't understand it, put it on the back burner. Wait until you're ready to receive it. Um, but I will be praying over anyone that touches click and play on this, whether they listen to it for five minutes or they listen to it many times, that you're given the understanding and you're given the guidance Allow him to lead you. Allow him to guide you. Start to discern those voices in your head. Allow him to teach you one-on-one. -on -one. Because, guys, stuff in the Bible has been altered. We have, we have shown that. We've proven it. All of the books are not there. Not everything is there. You have to understand the understanding from the Lord himself. He will give you that understanding. He will show you the way. He will have you know what he needs for you to know at the time that you are to receive it. He is so good to us. He loves us so much. He wants to get us home. Okay? So, go back. Take a look. See if the Lord leads you back to any of those other videos. Um, guys, this is what he wanted me to share. Okay? This will help get you through that process. God bless you all. Thank you so much for being a part of my life. Um, I hope to see you face to face very, very soon. Um, stay safe, guys. Wash your hands. Um, stay away from sick people if you can. God bless you all. Till we meet again.